What's up, Welder YouTube? And now Rumble. Yes, I'm now on Rumble. I will put my uh, referral link down. So if you haven't joined Rumble yet, please join it. It's a growing platform and it's not nowhere near as much centered for political views as what YouTube is. But now we've got through that. Um, as you know, I monitor quite a lot of channels. Someone, some that I politically believe in, some that I don't, just to see different sides of the stories and what's going on in the world. And today, I uh, got a notification from a certain channel, Ali Darwa. If you don't know who he is, he is a Muslim apologist and Mohammed Ijab as well. Um, the same, he's a Muslim apologist. And they've done a political PR stunt outside the BBC studios and they are blatantly lying. What we're going to do in this video, we're going to have a little look at some of their lies and we're going to break them down, starting with this clip from their lies. Now. In front of the BBC studios here today with Mohammed Hijab and we are here to show the double standards and the hypocrisy of uh, the British broadcasting uh, channel. Um, um, uh, and sadly, they've been very biased. They got some um, attacks from uh, Ofcom in the context they was being complaced towards Ofcom. And after that, they changed their tone towards the Israeli, embassy, uh, the Israeli ambassador. And that shows you, brothers and sisters, that when unbiased media has shown, you see how the world has seen the reality in, on the ground. What we're going to do now is me and Mohammed Ejab, we're going to go to a van that we have rented and you're going to see them images of the reality of BBC using the words like clash. And when it comes to the killings of the Palestinians, died, but when it comes to the killing of the Israelis, killed. Let's head off to the van, inshallah. And so that was the start of their episode today. And it's not British Broadcasting Channel, it's British Broadcasting Corporation. Always good to start off with a nice lie there. Um, they're saying that the, the mainstream media have been biased towards Israel. Pfft, I'm sorry, but they haven't at all. In fact, if anything, they've been biased towards Palestine because all you've seen in the mainstream media is images of civilians in Palestine yeah, dying and being killed by the retaliatory strikes from Israel towards Gaza, which is where Hamas has been firing the rockets from. Um, so that was the start of it. Let's go on to the next. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brothers and sisters and dear friends. We are here in front of the BBC studios in central London. Why are we here today? Brothers and sisters, we had to come here today to show the reality of what is happening. The crime, genocidal crime, ethnic cleansing, apartheid state of Israel. What you see behind me, brothers and sisters, is a, uh, a BBC reporter. Now, we're not blaming her, herself. I think her name is Jane. But the wording that's used here is very disturbing. Mohammed Ijab, so as you can see, on my left hand side it says 16, 61 Palestinian children died. And on your side, if you can read it, what does it say? The difference between using words like died and killed is died is used in a passive, whereas have been killed is used in an active form. The major difference here is, of course, when you're saying that the Palestinians have died, what you're doing is effectively absolving the perpetrators from the crime. You are not bringing attention of who the perpetrators are. You are not telling us who has killed them. Whereas two Israeli children have been killed, the emphasis here is, of course, on the killing yeah. and the killer. So it's very clear. This is manipulation of language. This is use of subtext, of certain connotations. And this manipulation of language highlights the extent to which, the extent to which BBC is trying to placate to the Zionist organizations in this country because they have been grabbed by the throat by those organizations and they cannot come to a situation where they are in fact being honest and objective in their journalism. What do exactly, you think? Exactly, exactly. I don't like the words that they're using. The reason they've done that is the Palestinians died in a retaliatory strike. They weren't actually being targeted by Israel, whereas... Israeli civilians were targeted by Hamas, hence killed. Again, my opinion, um, but the line on that. So we're now going to go to the next video. Why is it that when it comes to human rights and human suffering, that when the Muslims are suffering, there's a double standard? We do not just see it on a BBC, on a level where international media, but we even have states, America, Britain, people like Boris Johnson, Priti Patel, Yes, even uh, uh, Biden, the, the president of America, coming and telling us that Israel has a right to defend itself. Why is it that these words of Palestinians have a right to defend themselves is not used? Ali Dawa there, not understanding what the term defending themselves means. Let me explain it to him. When you defend yourself, you have to be attacked first. Hmm. Guess what? Hanamas fired the first lethal shots. 
Hence why Israel are defending themselves and the Palestinians are not. They are the aggressors in this situation. Yeah, blatantly lying again. Let's go to the next clip. So we are here to highlight that in the public and let the whole world see the double standards when it comes to the lives of the Palestinians and the Muslims, they have died, meaning they just cease to exist. But when it comes to the children of Israel, they are killed. We condemn killing done on both sides to innocent people, especially children. We're not here to talk about one and not the other because that will make us hypocrites and we're not hypocrites. We are here to speak the truth because Allah tells us in the Quran, speak the truth even if it's against yourself or kin. So not hypocrites, Ali, really? I've been monitoring your channel and day by day you've been uploading all the innocents that have died in this conflict. And again, I agree with you. Any innocent that dies is horrific. But you mention all the Palestinian children and you never ever mention the Israeli children. In fact, I've been on your videos commenting saying what about the Israeli children <sighs> because you're just not doing it. So again, lie. We're saying why the double standards? Now we're going to go to another slideshow where this word clash was used and BBC got so much heat because Muslims in their thousands and millions came together and alhamdulillah reported it to Ofcom and Ofcom had to do something about it and then the BBC turned its eyes to Israel. But before that, they were using the word clash. Now, do you have a problem with the word clash? I do have a problem with the word clash. Once again, it's a, it is, when you use the word clash, you get the, you get the thing yes. first? So now the thing is, brothers and sisters, before all of this, the word clash was used. Yeah? Now, Hijab, do you have a problem with the word clash? The word clash, once again, this is typical manipulation of language. Using language which makes it seem as if there is a mutual or an equ equal reciprocation of violence. This is not an equal or a mutual reciprocation of violence. There clearly is a Goliath, to use the ironic term, in the state of Israel, which is one of the most capable armies in the known world. And then you have these military groups and children, and you have these most densely populated area in the world of two million people being squashed into an area. The biggest open air prison. Now Again, with the, I don't like the words that they're using. They're using the term clash because two groups of people are coming together and they're clashing. Mm. And they're using it in context of protesters throwing stuff at the police, including petrol bombs, and the police firing back with rubber bullets and tear gas. No, yeah, I ain't got a problem with that. I don't know what these people's problem with words are. I mean, freedom of speech, people can say whatever they want. I don't criticise what you say. You have a right to say whatever you want. I'll call you out on it, but yeah. Say whatever you want. Let's go to the next clip. So another image, brothers and sisters. I have no problem if you want to use the word clash with this because we have a rocket. Look at this. Rocks, these rockets. Yeah. If this, if this is the clash you're talking about, no problem. They are clashing. They are clashing with a little child. He's four or five years old with a little rock in his hand versus a rocket. A, 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 the latest technology rocket that is being fired towards these people. I've got to say. This one made me laugh with the blatantness of the absolute deception here. Let's break down those two pictures. Yeah, that's a kid throwing a rocket, uh, a rock, sorry. Uh, probably at Israeli police. Mm. And I guarantee you, he did not get that rocket fired at him. You know what I'm tell you why? That rocket is part of the Israeli Iron Dome defense system and isn't fired at any human being. It's actually used to prevent rockets falling down on Israeli civilians. I mean, that one really made me laugh. That one was so blatantly BS. And the, the fact that they could keep a straight face while they were doing that, I mean, pfft, as they say, inshallah. Um, let's have a look at the next one. It gets worse and worse. Because you cannot compare yes. the, the capabilities of a military group yes. like Hamas with the, f with the fourth most capable army in the world with yes. nuclear weapons, yes. which is getting four, bi four trillion, billion. billion, is it trillion? Billion. 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 Billion pounds, or it wouldn't be trillion, four billion pounds from the United States of America per, per annum. Yeah. Now, how can we, how can we in any way, shape, or form compare the two? It's a complete disparity. It's and the fact that they're using these terms shows clear bias in every word that they utter and yeah. every news report that they put out. Exactly. So, I do agree with one thing they just said there Israel are a very powerful military. But, but comparing Hamas to Israel is nonsense when it's Hamas who attacked Israel in this situation first. Okay, Mohammed, you're quite tall. You're quite beefy. I'm not as tall as you. Um, I probably weigh about the same as you because I have got a muscle base, but I'm around six foot. You're six foot seven. If I attack you because you're taller than me, are you not going to attack me back because I'm smaller? 
exactly nonsense let's have a look at the next clip okay guys so basically as you can see no problem here is what a rubber bullet clashing we're going to use bbc because we want to you know uh, use their wording no problem here is a rubber bullet clashing with a 14 year old looks like that is a clash that is a rubber bullet by the way they call it rubber bullet it's actually if you look closely it's actually steel so you can see here brothers and sisters in here that's steel that's rubber coating, yeah? It's like me getting a real live ammunition and putting a bit of rubber uh, around it and say, oh, it's a rubber bullet, I'll show you with a rubber bullet. This is what a clash looks like, okay? And here is another clash. This is a rocket clashing with a baby. There you go. So these rockets are clashing with these babies and blowing them into pieces. Okay, okay, okay. The entire police forces of the world use rubber bullets, for crowd control yes they have a tiny bit of metal in them that is to help propel them from the rifle and head towards whoever they're shooting them at they don't kill people they are non-lethal ammunition every police force uses them for crowd control and you saw again there using pictures of the iron dome mixing that with a picture of, of an injured baby and saying oh they're using these to blow babies to bits no again they're using that to stop hamas destroying their civilians <sighs> And they're called BBC Bias. I mean, come on, this is getting ridiculous now. Let's have a look at the next clip. One more thing. Yes, please, Ijab. Add, adding to that, the question not, should not be whether this is a clash or not. Next the one. question should really be, and the questions are typically the things that I'm going to make us inquire about. The question really should be, are and have the Israeli army been targeting civilians? That's the question. When you throw a missile or when you detonate a bomb when you, or you have a drone that kills 30% children, 20% women, yeah, and the rest of the numbers, we don't know exactly how many so-called militants are being killed in this. The vast majority, here's the question, if you know, if you know that when you press a button, the vast majority of people that are going to be killed when you do so are civilians, women, children, elderly, and you press that button, are you targeting civilians? Are you trying to punish the militant groups and the resistances? Are you trying to punish them with the civilians? That seems to be the tactic at play because for year after year, cast lead, protective edge, the Intifada, all of these year after year, and this even predates Hamas before 1987, you have been doing the same thing. It's, it is a policy you have, a policy of targeting civilians and punishing civilians, punishing them but for the resistance of adults who want a free Palestine. This is modern day genocide. There's no doubt about it. This is modern day atrocity. You could even say this is similar to what happened with the Nazis and the Jews. Come on, Mohammed, come on. I mean, I agree with part of what you're saying. Yeah, if you're purposely pressing a button when you know it's going to attack civilians, yeah, that's a crime. Guess who did that? Hamas. Uh -huh. Guess who's not doing that? Israel. The reason why I'm saying they're not doing that is I've uploaded a couple of videos now which prove that Israel are trying to avoid civilian casualties. Go and have a look at them. I've got video evidence to back that up. Hamas are the ones that are pressing a button knowing that it's going to attack civilians because they're not targeting anyone else apart from civilians, which is a war crime. He even tried to say that Israel are doing the same as what the Nazis did in the Holocaust. Oh my God, are you absolutely serious? What a complete and utter joke these two people have just made of themselves, honestly. Um, this is me just sort of trying to put some common sense into this argument. I doubt these two people have got much of that from what I've just seen in there. But again, if you do disagree with anything that I've said with my opinions here, because they are just my opinions, please leave your comments below. Let's debate this. If you are new to this channel, please subscribe. And yeah, let's debate this issue.